So someone had asked me to do a more intensive video on the Canaro virus. And it's not really the Canaro virus that I worry about, but because I was raised Mormon, and one of the things that the Mormon people do is they prep. It's part of the religion because they believe that when Jesus Christ comes back and, you know, the second coming, not everybody, it's like, they're really like pretty rational about this. And they're like, there will be policy and procedures and not everyone will go at the same time. And it could take up to seven years for the rapture to actually happen. Like you're just going to be in limbo for like three or four years while your paperwork goes through. So it was instilled in me very young. So one of the things that I've been doing every time I go to the store is I buy a thing of rice. It's like 97 cents. You would be amazed at how long your family can survive on just fucking rice and beans. Also something I buy tons of. It's so if somebody's sick, if there's quarantine, I don't have to go right. to the store. So you're going to want to add just a little bit of salt to this um, milk, water, not a lot, just a little, just enough to give it a little bit of saltiness. And then you just want to occasionally, like I told you, this water is turned completely off, but it is still hot. I mean, it's not too hot, but it's still hot. So you just want to occasionally stir so that you get everything saturated. Try to keep it as under the water as you can. This is done. These are all done. I've got the other ones underneath here. So this is just going to be cooling down. Now we're going to make the mashed potatoes. For the mashed potatoes, you will need heavy whipping cream, butter, and salt. Also, I have my jar. And how do you dispose of incredibly hot, very dangerous, burn you and send you to the hospital oil? This is how. You very carefully pour it into this jar. Just like this. Very slowly. Very slowly. Oh, you want to try not to get it in the pro tip right here. Now look at this pan. Look, it's got burnt stuff. Now I emptied all the oil out of it. So now what do I do? I take a little bit of my soap. Now the heat is off, but there is, the, pan, the pan itself is still hot. So you just take a little bit of the soap. And take a paper towel. And you just go, and you move it around while it's still hot. That soap. That soap will get all that stuck on stuff off. And now you just want to let this cool down and then you wash it. It's a lot easier to do now. I mean, normally I would be holding the handle with my other hand and not the phone, but it's a lot easier. It's going to be a lot easier to wash now than it would have been before. Look, and then you just set that aside, let that cool off and throw that away. Pro tip. Now you're going to leave this in here in your sink. Everyone in my family knows that if there's a jar, in the corner not to touch it because it has hot stuff in it you leave it there while you eat your meal and then when you're done throw it away okay so this is all done here is my chicken tenders there is my mashed potatoes here is my corn i heated up this garlic toast because i had it in the freezer and it was going to get freezer burnt okay and since i already have this chicken and i've already got it all out i'm going to go ahead and make my chicken tiki masala for tomorrow night but i'm going to make it tonight so then it can sit in this all night long, and tomorrow I'll just have to make rice. So what I have is the chicken tenders I didn't use cut into cubes. I'm going to use ginger, cloves, sage, and nutmeg in with my oil. I don't have to, but I will. And I'm going to fry up two medium white onions, two ribs of celery, and one green bell pepper with the chicken. Get it all good and percolating and then we'll add this sauce and then tomorrow all i have to do is make the rice and dinner's done so there you go i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope you had a good night i love y'all so you want to fry this up until it's translucent and some of these are not quite done all the way so i'm just gonna move them off to the side and the bigger ones that aren't cooked all the way they kind of tend to go to the top so you just kind of fry those by themselves no big deal and you're gonna cook this with the chicken too so you got time so we're going to move all these translucent onions because they're good. They don't need much more. And we're going to add our chicken right here. And then we're going to fry that up just like that. Listen to that. Okay, so I added up my chicken and I added my tiki masala sauce. And now I'm just going to let this simmer for about 10 minutes. I'm going to put the heat off. Let the heat, I'm going to put the lid on and I'm just going to leave it alone. Done. That was, it was super easy. Okay, so here's what I got. I got my celery and my onions and my bell peppers and my chicken. And I got my tiki masala sauce in there. And now I've got the heat off and I'm going to just leave this like this until the heat goes away. There's no heat to it, but it's already hot. So I'm just going to leave that to do its thing and rumiate. 
And then tomorrow, I just heat that up and serve it on a thing of rice, and I'm done. So if judging by this plate, I definitely think the chicken tikka masala was a hit. My kids loved it. I made some uh, jasmine rice with it, which is a different kind of rice. It's like a longer grain rice. It's really, it's, it's better for like this type of food. So we have the leftover rice. And then as you can see, there's not much left here. And um, what is left here goes to uh, my dog, Leo. I'll give it to him. And then I also cut up some, I sliced up some cucumbers. And then heavy whipping cream, dill, and Greek seasoning to make like a dip, like a tzatziki kind of dip. Mm -mm. It's good. Yeah. Bow. 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 Crush pause. Dear Lord, thank you for this food, and please be with all the puppies that don't have any. Amen.